Welcome to all of you who are joining us for worship online at Belleville First United Methodist Church. We are honored to be sharing this time with you. Today, Pastor Mary Loring continues her sermon series about the names or titles we would associate with the Christ child with a message she is calling Incarnate Titles, Emmanuel. Incarnate is really a classy word to describe God coming into our world in human form. Now, believe me, her message does a much better job of explaining it than I ever could. You know, if this is your first time visiting with us, or you would like to get more information about everything going on at Belleville First, all you need to do is to text the word Belleville App to 77977. Enter that same Belleville App word in the keyword search and press connect. It's that easy. And we can come to experience a little more connectedness as COVID continues to make us feel just a little isolated. Ah, enough from me. It's time for some music. Feel free to sing along or just listen as the praise band leads us off with Chris Tomlin's Emmanuel. Joyful hearts, we celebrate the coming King. 
Advent is time to remember the promises God of God. With the joyful hearts, we celebrate the coming King. Today, we light three candles. The candle of hope, the candle of peace, and the candle of joy. The light on this third candle reminds us that we have no reason to be fearful or anxious because God has sent us a Savior. Let's be joyful in the assurance of God's love for us and promise to serve him faithfully with joy-filled hearts. Gracious God, remind us today and every day that we have good reason to be joyful and forgive us for focusing our minds on negative things. Because you sent your Son into the world, we can truly celebrate this season of wonder. Fill our hearts with calm assurance so that we, may be we might be messengers of hope and peace who joyfully spread your love wherever we go. Amen. Hi, Belleville First UMC. It's Jill, your Director of Spiritual Formation, here to bring you another children's message. Hey kids, hey kids, grown-ups. Hope everybody's doing well. We have a new name to learn this week to call Jesus. We are learning about Jesus as Emmanuel. Emmanuel is another name for Jesus and it means God with us. This other name for Jesus means that God is with us all the time and loves us all the time, no matter what is going on in our lives. What else is like that? Can you think of anything? Do you know what this is? This is a silhouette or shadow picture of my nephew drawn at Disney World when he was a boy. Our shadow is something that stays with us. We can usually see it if we look, and even if we forget, when we think about it and look again, we see it was always with us. Just like God, who is with us everywhere we go and always in our hearts. It can be hard to know all of what God is, but we can know for sure that God never leaves us. God sent us Jesus, who lived alongside us, right? He understands everything. And Jesus' human time on earth was God's way of telling us how much he loves us. He sent Jesus to live with us, teach us, and show us how to be. Now, because Jesus lived a long time ago, it can sometimes be hard to understand how God is with us today if Jesus is no longer living on earth. That's why God gave us each other, as reminders of how much God loves us and is with us all the time. Today, as in many difficult times, we might need the reminder hearing over and over again that God is with us. We could need to be reminded that God can handle our feelings, no matter what they are, and that God knows our hearts. In times of sickness, difficulty, when there's been war, disease, and viruses, God never stops loving all of creation and never stops being with all of those affected all over the world. Every person has tough times in their life. Even if it doesn't look like it, you can be sure that they have had challenges too. But Jesus was born into the world as a deep act of love to be close to God's people, no matter what we're going through. And that's what we're waiting to celebrate during the Advent season, the birth of Jesus. I'm kind of wondering what you think of when you hear something that sounds like this. Wow, maybe you think that there's trouble when you hear a siren and the people using the siren are coming to help. Or maybe what pops into your head is help is on the way and you think of the helpers like firemen or the people on an ambulance when you hear a siren. Who do you know that has helped you, your friends or family by loving you and accepting you, by staying with you no matter what and making you feel better? by sticking with you and in your life for a long time. Who are your helpers? The people that you count on? Well, whoever they are, they are there because of Jesus, Emmanuel, blessing you and staying with you. God can send people to help us when we are feeling sad, scared, or anxious, and we can know that God is comforting us through them. So this week, let's try to be helpers for other people by doing some holy listening. That's when we wait patiently 
and hear and understand people and are interested in what they are saying. We don't try to talk back to them or say what we want. We just stay with them and try to understand. We can never know how someone else feels, but sometimes we can relate to their experiences if we hear them sharing and remember something like it that happened to us. This is one great way to help people and love them like Jesus loves us. So let's try to do that this week. Shall we pray together? Almighty heavenly holy host, we thank you so much for all of our helpers. We thank you most especially for Jesus, Emmanuel, the one you sent to help us and stay with us always. Let us have a great week, God. Let us be helpers to others. Let us remember all of those who help us. And let us stay excited to realize the birth of your son as we wait through the Advent season for Christmas. It's in your son's name, Emmanuel, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Well, as always, it's been nice to be with you, and I can't wait to see you again next week. Take care, and until then, God bless. Bye-bye. One of my favorite Christmas songs is I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. It was written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. In the song, he shares these words. And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth. Longfellow had just lost his wife in a fire and his son was severely injured in the Civil War. Longfellow felt compelled to share his pain in prayer. Where Ever life finds you right now, this is the time for lifting prayers to God. We have chosen the song, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming, to sing as we approach the throne of God. The text for this song is based on the prophecy of Isaiah, foretelling the incarnation of the Christ child. And after Joy Dubin has shared our praises and concerns, and prayers of the people, we leave our time of prayer trusting God to hear our pleas as we sing the third verse of that same hymn. prayer, we want to recognize those that uh, we know of this morning. Uh, a praise for successful surgery for Debbie Smith's son, Bobby, and uh, prayers for continued healing. A praise from uh, Betty Shaw, who after a severe fall with bruises and pains, had no broken bones, and that is good news. We continue to pray for Elaine Stabna and uh, healing from her stroke. A praise from Vern Carlson that his eye surgery has been successful and continued prayer for Janet McDermott as she's undergoing treatment for cancer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pause this morning recognizing who you are, creator of all, our Savior and our Redeemer. Thank you for loving us enough 
to send your only son to die in our place, providing a way for us to know you and to be with you for eternity. Please forgive us when we try to go our own way, to do our own thing, to fail to recognize your loving presence in our lives, to fail to be your people. May we turn from our way to you, recognizing our need for you in our lives. We lift to you those who are in need of physical healing, those mentioned earlier, and those spoken silently in our hearts. Those who are hurting physically and emotionally, those who are impacted by this virus physically, emotionally, and financially, we thank you for answers to these prayers and others in our minds and on our hearts. You have said that we will face the storms of life but you have promised to be with us to carry the load. We thank you for that. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. and Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. today is from Matthew chapter 1 beginning in verse 20 the second part and reading through 23 I'm reading from uh, the message translation she will bring a son to birth and when she does you Joseph will name him Jesus God saves because he will save his people from their sins this would bring the prophet's embryonic sermon to full term watch for this a virgin will get pregnant and bear a son. They will name him Emmanuel, Hebrew for God is with us. So ends our reading. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Emmanuel, God with us. I think this part of God's story is difficult for us rationally-minded human beings to comprehend. The God who had said from the beginning of this very story that God was with God's people now comes to earth and puts on flesh and lives with us. Yeah, I get it. It's probably the most mind-blowing concept of God there is. Over the years, I've received many questions about this concept, this concept of the incarnation, the enfleshment. Yes, this concept of God incarnate has been a stopping point for many when it comes to faith. They just can't believe. And they just can't get past it. And they ask, if there really is a God, why doesn't God just show God's self to us? Have you ever seen God yourself, is what they ask. Friends and family members who don't believe in God, we all have them, don't we? Those who have been baptized and even confirmed in the church, but somewhere along the line, 
they have lost their faith. We pray for them, and we talk to them about our own faith, but they always seem to be rationalizing for why we're, what we're saying and why we're saying it and how it isn't true, and then telling us we're gullible. Yet I've also heard from many of you who have been in my classes how it's unfathomable to you how someone cannot believe in this God, this Emmanuel, who is with us and knows us, and how they can even survive without that knowledge. So today, let's look at the crux of the Christmas story and see how we may be able to help put flesh on it for those who do not believe. Matthew, the author of the first gospel story in the New Testament, was an excellent resource writer. Even within the first few verses we hear today, Matthew quotes Isaiah. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Isaiah, the prophet, spoke these words about a woman during the time prior to the Israelites' exile. This child, Emmanuel, was the sign that Israel would soon be held in captivity, and yet God would remain with them even while they were in exile. This child was the promise of deliverance one day. For our boy Matthew, the first Emmanuel was the foreshadowing of Jesus. There is no evidence that Mary ever called Jesus Emmanuel. The name is not mentioned anywhere else in the New Testament. Matthew alone found in this somewhat obscure verse in Isaiah a powerful picture of who Jesus is and why he came. For Matthew, this term Emmanuel is the launch of a theme that is throughout his gospel, portraying Jesus as the Son of God. In fact, in this first gospel story, we see Jesus do things that only God is able to do. He heals the sick and the demon-possessed. He raises the dead. He calms the sea. He feeds the 5,000. He walks on water, and this is just to name a few. As Isaiah proclaims that God is with the people in his day, Matthew sees Jesus fulfilling this God with us-ness. Matthew, maybe more than any other gospel writer, sees within Jesus a clear picture of God. The other remarkable thing that Matthew portrays in how, is how human Jesus really was. Emmanuel means that in Jesus, God knows the smell of rain on a summer's day. He tastes the meal of warm bread and smoked fish with a glass of wine. He knows the joy of sharing with good friends. He's seen with the same eyes that we see the beauty of a sunset. He's known how the human heart feels when it loves deeply and the intensity of grief when a good friend dies. He knows what it feels like to laugh and to cry, to be angry and afraid, not as the omniscient, omniscient all-powerful, omnipresent God, but as we experience these things in the flesh, God emptied himself on his, of his divine power to experience life as one of us. He also experienced the same frailties, frustrations, temptations, and the desires of the flesh as we experience. Yet Jesus was tested as we are and was without sin. When you come to God, pouring out your heart, asking for God's help, and praying for God's forgiveness, you pray to the one who knows, who understands what it is to be fallible, to be frail, and to be fearful. 
This is the power of the incarnation. We know this as believers, and because we know this, we choose to live our lives differently, don't we? We want to be close to God in Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we live into the promise that Jesus gave to all who believe. Jesus promised he would be with us even until the end of the age. There is so much joy in knowing that. This is why we rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So where does that leave you with your friend or family member who finds it hard to believe and is asking you if you really believe in God? And if God really exists, why doesn't God show God's self? And asking us if we have ever seen God. Your answer brings hope and connection in a lonely world. And it goes something like this. God shows up each time I am here for you, listening and helping you to cope in this world. I also see God in you when you do the same for me. Now I know they still may not buy this, but at least you have opened the door, the door to understanding that we all are to be Jesus' hands and feet, even to our own friends and family members. For you see, we are the physical reminders of Emmanuel, and that Emmanuel is the someone who is with the someone who feels alone, who is alone and is hospitalized, or is in an argument with us because they just can't seem to believe, and they find us gullible because we do. When we care for others, we can say to them, feel my hand. I came to remind you that Jesus is here with you, Emmanuel, God with us, right here in this room. I am the physical representation of Emmanuel, God with us, with you here today. We are meant to do the things that Jesus did. We are to incarnate Christ to one another. So today, don't focus on the not believing in the other and focus on your joy-filled belief. Spread that joy, becoming messengers of hope and peace, sharing God's love with everyone you meet. To those who are the cashiers at the store, to the gas station attendants, to the mail carriers, to the friend whose heart is breaking, to the daughter or son who do not remember the whole story, except for maybe the baby in the manger, to the mother or father whose life seems to be so distracted and spiraling out of control, to everyone who does not know the good news, the good news of great joy, which is for all people. How are you being the incarnation of God for others today? Are you being Emmanuel, God with us to everyone you encounter? On this third week of Advent, let us remember the reasons to be joyful and to spread God's love. What if we took this message seriously? What if we truly began to live incarnately? Would our love and our joy begin to reflect in those we encounter? Would we witness more kindness and grace in our world? What if we allowed our Christmas joy to overflow to those we hold in the depths of our hearts, the ones we pray for daily, the ones in our lives who have not yet chosen to believe? Would we recognize the need of a little Christmas now? For we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Candles in the windows, carols at the spinach. Yes, we need a little Christmas right this very minute. We need a little Christmas now. May our lives sing of the great joy that has been given to all people. 
And may the ones who have yet to believe be drawn to our joy. May we be Emmanuel, God with us. Joy to the world this Christmas. Amen. Hello, my name is Mickey. This is the time in our service that we come to ask you for your financial support. If you are new to our church service, we welcome you and thank you for joining us this morning. If you are already an active and faithful member, we thank you too. By giving today, you are showing that our church has a meaningful place in your heart. It allows us to preach the gospel, make disciples, and support others in our community who need help. So, if you find yourself ready to put God first in this financial decision, we encourage you to make a one-time gift or sign up to make recurring donations. And here are the ways you can do that. First, you can mail an offering to our church. Our address is 417 Charles Street. Or you can give electronically through a link to our vendor, PushPay, and there are a few ways you can do that. The first one is you can text the word Belleville to 77977. Second, go to the bottom of our web site page, bellevillefirstumc.org, and click on the Push Pay logo. And third, click on the Give button on our church app. Now, to get our church app, there is a couple steps here. One is you text Belleville app to 77977 or search for My Church in the App Store. Second, in the My Church app, type Belleville app, and then finally click on Connect. Thank you for being with us this morning. We hope to see you again. For Christmas this year, consider helping provide health care for the people of John Dean Town, Liberia. Sponsor the salary of Nurse Comfort Flomo, the only health care professional serving the John Dean Town United Methodist Clinic. Without the clinic and its staff, there is no chance for medical care in the local area. Sponsor a day of Comfort's time for only $16, a week for $80, or an entire month for $350. Give in honor of loved ones, or simply give because it's a way of showing Jesus' love for people in one of the poorest countries on earth. You can mail a check to the church, just be sure to put nurse salary in the memo, or feel free to use the fund drop-down box in the PushPay app. Contact Mark Grenewig with any questions. Thank you so much for your compassion and support. Each Saturday evening through Saturday, December 19th at 6.30 p.m., come gather around the large outdoor Advent wreath on the lakeside of Belleville First. We will sing a few carols, have conversation about where we've seen hope, peace, joy, and love around us, and light the candles of our glowing wreath. Come prepared for the weather, wear a mask, and be sure to socially distance from those not within your family unit as we all await the arrival of the Christ of Christmas. Tired? Worn out? COVID got you down? Need a little bit of fun to wrap up your week? Then join Pastor Mary and Jill for fabulous fun Fridays on December 11th and 18th at 7 o'clock p.m. Each week there will be a game and then watch a classic Christmas movie. It's fun for the whole family. Stock up on your favorite Christmas snacks and beverages and zoom away fabulous fun Fridays with Pastor Mary and Jill. If you have an announcement, a praise or concern you want shared in our online service, be sure to get them to the church office by noon on Mondays.
Depart in exuberant joy, taking with you the peace of Christ and the certain knowledge that Jesus is always coming into the world. Let us seek Jesus, not in a long-ago stable or ancient manger, but in the people we meet and in the depths of our own hearts. May the blessing of Christmas make us a blessing to others. May the peace of the season pervade all that we do. Let's welcome the challenge of discipleship. Let's offer ourselves as Emmanuel's ministers. Let us now go forth in hope, in joy, in peace, and in love to serve our God who is always with us. Amen.